Hello and welcome to How to BGA. I'm Chris Steele, and today I'm going to introduce you to BoardGameArena.com, BGA, and run you through the basics of how to get started with the site in general, how to search for and join games, how to start your own game, how to play solo for games that support it, and then I'll provide an overview of your personal profile, including some stat tracking, what is ELO, and a bit of personalization. This video is split into segments, there are a link in the descriptions, for easy reference later, but I recommend you watch the whole video f your first time through as concepts you learn in previous segments will be built upon in later ones. So what is BGA? Well, as the site says when you load it up at BoardGameArena.com, it is the largest board gaming table in the world. Essentially, BGA is a website. It plays in any browser. You can play on any device. I play on a Mac and my iPhone and my tablet. I play against people who are playing on PC and Android. Um, there's even Wii, PlayStation, Xbox, basically anything that has a browser, you'll be able to play Board Game Arena on. It is free. Now, there are, is a premium membership. We'll get into what that does for you later. But for all intents and purposes, you can play every game on the site for free. You can play in real time, which basically means everyone's sitting and playing the game at the same time as you would expect in a real life game. Or you can play turn-based. Obviously most games have turns and are turn-based, but basically what this means is you can set it to say, I wanna play a game and everyone has to take five turns a day or one turn a day. And you can set that to pretty much any number you want uh, to not have to be at your desk all the time. Uh, to play these games. In fact, a lot of people have many, many, many different turn-based games going on at any given time, and they check in periodically throughout the day and take their turns wherever their turn is up. You are also can be pretty competitive on Board Game Arena. The basics, and when you first start playing, you'll be playing against other people that are kind of at your same level for all the games you might be playing, but as you raise your rankings in certain games, you can join tournaments for those games. You can join arena mode games. I'll talk about all those in different videos. But the thing to take away from this is Board Game Arena is really for gamers of all levels. And finally, I want to say there are a ton of great games on the site. Not all 500 games are you know, class one games, but there are a ton of class one games. Another thing to note is all of the games on Board Game Arena have been approved by the publisher to be there, and all of the games on Board Game Arena implement all of the rules for you. This isn't like other sites that might have a bunch of assets up there, but you still have to know all the rules and manipulate everything. Manipulate everything. Uh, nope, everything here is taken care of for you. You just play the game. Board Game Arena takes care of all the fiddly bits. So. How do we log in? It's pretty easy. If you don't have an account, click on Start Playing Now and create an account. Choose a username, email address, password, start playing. I have an account already, so I'm gonna log in. I'll see you on the other side. When you first log into Board Game Arena, you're gonna be taken to essentially this news feed. Uh, this gives you information about the latest games that have been released. Baron Park was just released this week and gives you a feed for whatever friends and groups you might be a part of or tournaments you might be a part of and tells you what's going on there. You can also post things into this feed if you want to and other people who are friends with you will see that information as well. In order to play a new game, you're, you're probably not going to start here. You can. You can click on any of these games here if you want to play those games, but you're probably going to start on Play Now. To start a game, just click on play now. You're going to get a few recommendations um, after we make some important choices up here. So the first is we need to select a game mode. There are three different game modes, simple game, arena, and tournaments. Simple is probably overstating. This is just your general category. It's the, if you just want to play a game, this is it. I just want to set up a game. I don't want to do anything else. It, that's it. Arena games are very competitive. It's going to be season-based, and the game is going to be pre-configured for you. And anytime you play an arena game for that season, you're always going to play the same configuration of that game. And you're going to play against other people who are trying to compete for the highest rating for the season. Tournaments, are, tur tournaments can be set up by anybody. 
and you can just join a tournament and see how you do against how many ever people are in that tournament. Uh, both arena and tournaments, though, do require that you've played the game that you're competing in enough times to have a minimum rating of 100 in it. We'll talk about ratings in a little bit. But for this purposes, most of the time, you're just going to play a simple game. So your game mode is going to be simple game. You can then select your speed. You can do real-time or turn-based, as we mentioned before. Real-time games might be something you want to do with friends or family where you know you're going to be playing in real time and you can play uh, quickly. Everyone's going to stay there. Turn-based might be something you want to do if you just want to try out a game and you know take a couple turns a day but not have a huge time commitment all at one time. Uh, for our purposes here, we're going to use turn-based. And then you can choose who you want to play with. Board Game Arena will do some matchmaking for you. Now, if you say, I only want to play with friends, it's going to make sure that you're only playing with friends who are also interested in the same games that you're playing at the time. You can say automatic. This will find opponents from around the world that are your basically around your same uh, ranking. Or you can go manual and you can choose when to open up the table and who to invite and all of that. Uh, we're going to choose manual. These settings here, simple game, turn-based manual, will tend to be the most common settings that you'll see. And what you see now is recommendations. So I can join any game that has a table available. We see there's an available table in Catan, uh, one for Carcassonne, and one's for Six Nimit. So these are just recommendations. There are actually a ton of games. You have 497 different games you haven't tried before. Uh, so we could keep scrolling down and see a ton of different things to choose. You may not see these recommendations. It basically depends on what you've clicked on already as to what recommendations you see. We'll talk a bit on how to join a game that you might be looking for. But let's for a moment just look at take a look at Catan. So we can click on Catan. We see that there's a table here. It is, has been created 49 minutes ago. It's variable setup and fixed harbors. There are three people in the game, and as soon as the fourth person joins, the game will start. You have to take three moves per day, and that's basically within a 24-hour period. Um, the way that works is you're just getting you're going to get X number of hours based on how many moves per day to take each turn. Uh, if you want to join it, you click join and you're in. Uh, if you want to get more information about it, you can click view and get a lot more information at your fingertips. We'll cover what you see in that view in a moment. But what if this game isn't here or you're just on the site and you want to say, hey, what's available? Well, that's where the games tab comes into play. Clicking on the Games tab takes you to a slightly different interface. Um, this allows you to search through a bunch of games. Now, again, it's bubbling some suggestions up for you, the newest games. Um, and this is my favorite tag here, Popular. If you click on the Popular tag, you get the top 100 games on Board Game Arena. Now, some of these games have a little star here. Some of them don't. If it has a star, that means you have to be a premium member to start one of those games, but anyone can join a game that's already been started by a premium member. So if you wanted to play one of these games, you could take a look around and say, okay, I, I want to play Azul. So I'm going to click into Azul. Even though it's a premium game, I can see, you know, see if anyone else is waiting to, for people to join games. In the Azul page, you'll be able to click on the Learn if you want to uh, go to a tutorial. Um, you can click play if to take you directly to see what tables you're on. We'll do that in a second. Um, you can see a little bit of a video of the game being played on Board Game Arena. There are how to play videos on most games. These are typically the videos for how to play the physical game. And there are the rules themselves. So you, typically there's a rules PDF that you can click on and go to. In this case, there are 25 of them because there are a lot of different languages for Azul rules. You'll get some pictures, some stats, some forum posts, and rankings for people who are playing in the arena mode. And then you'll get a summary too. All of this is very useful if you haven't played the game and you want to get an idea of whether or not this might be a game that would be interesting to you. So let's assume that you've looked at this and you said, okay, yes, this is something I'm, I want to do. So you're going to click on play. And this is going to take you back to the Play Now page. But now we're just looking at this game, the game that we just clicked on. At the moment, there are no games of open tables. Um, this is typically rare. I'm recording this very late at night, so it's not uncommon to see that there aren't tables late at night happening. But there are a ton of tables. If I displayed tables I can't join, 
there are a ton of tables that are hidden here. I'm not actually going to click on this because it'd be too many tables for the browser to handle in a, in a fast way. So I'm not going to bother with that. But that's it. That's how you're going to search for these. Now, there's a if you notice up here, you have a lot of filters. And if you don't see the filters here, you can click this filters tab and that'll show the filters. These are some quick filters down here. So if you're looking for a two player game, click on best for two. And here's a bunch of two player games you can play. If you're looking for something that's a little bit more uh, family oriented, there you go. How about solo games? We'll talk about how to start one of those in a moment. And if you want to get a little bit more detailed, you can go ahead and do some detailed filters here. Um, you know, if I want a long game and with a core gamer complexity, so I can play Terra Mystica or the Gaia Project or Beyond the Sun, Great Western Trail, all amazing games. I love these games. Um, and again, you can filter by theme and mechanic and specify different things. You can say, show me games I've only played before or I've never played before or only the ones that have a tutorial. So there's a ton of ways that you can filter and search for games here. So let's say you're in a situation where you want to start a game. Um, we'll pick Six Nimit here because it's non-premium and I'm a non-premium member right now. So I'm gonna click on this here and I'm gonna click play. There are currently no tables for this, but I can create one. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna talk about how to create and play your first game. To create a table, you click create. You're gonna have a number of options when you create a table. The first one is the number of players that you want to play. Um, you also get some recommendations here. This game plays best at five. Playing with two or three players is possible, but not recommended for the best play. So I can leave this open for five players. I can then decide whether or not, um, I can then configure my table over here and then open my table to others. Now, something to be aware of is when you open tables to others, that allows anyone that can see the table to join the table. So we'll talk about how to configure this so that you can have the right um, groups see the table. If you're trying to create a table that you only want your friends to join, there's some restrictions you can put on the table to do that. But before we do that, I wanna talk about these game modes here, which are a little different than the real-time and turn-based game mode on the previous screen. Um, there's normal mode and then there's training mode. These two game modes are identical as far as gameplay is concerned in all ways. The difference is what it happens after the game is over, and that is it doesn't track any stats or even the play happened in for most situations in training mode. Also, normal games require that a player take their turn on time. They can't drop in the middle without getting penalties. So there's some enforcement around normal mode. In training mode, anyone can drop whenever they want. There's no rules around there's no penalties if you drop you don't have to take your turn on time in fact the training mode doesn't even have a turn timer you can literally take you know four years to take your next move in training mode so i recommend in most cases you play in normal mode only play in training mode if you're trying to you know figure something out and you don't think you don't know if you're going to get through the entire game you're playing with friends something like that then training mode's okay but most of the time you want to play in normal mode in normal mode you're going to be able to choose your game speed and you can choose real time this usually lets you do something like three four or five minutes per turn or you can play in fast turn base so 24 hours um 24 moves per day basically means you're going to pick a 12 hour time frame, And in that time frame, you're going to have to take 24 moves. Um, so if I click this, you can see how this gives me a playing time frame of all the things I can take here. Um, it is in 24 hour time, but it is local time when you do this. So this would be my local time from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. I can also do turn based one move per day. Um, and this is just 24 hour days. You can take it pretty much anytime you want and pretty much any time in the middle. You can choose no time limit with a normal game. It is highly, highly discouraged. And in fact, you can only do it with friends because there's no way to end a game that has no time limit if someone just stops taking turns. That game will just exist forever unless everyone bails out of it. So these two settings here are going to handle the type of 
your turn length and whether or not it's ranked or not. Um, I'm going to change this to training mode for a couple of reasons. A, I'm not going to complete the, the whole game and I want to quit early. So that's why I'm playing training mode. If I was playing a real game though, I would have normal mode. The rest of these settings are going to be based on the game itself. In Six Nimitz, we have two settings here. We can choose a card set. So it looks like there's three different card sets here. And we can choose the place card. We can go on the right for a normal game or on the right and the left for a professional game. That's it. You're going to choose those options. I'll just choose the base options here. And then you can open up the table and wait for other people to join. But again, I mentioned that if you open up the table and you don't put any restrictions, everybody can see this game. So if you want to have restrictions, you can add restrictions to the table access. When you click on this, you have a number of options. You can restrict based on the strength of the player. So if you only want to play with beginner players, you can uncheck all of these other boxes here. And then you're not going to have you know expert players come in and just destroy you. Um, I only want to play with beginners. You can also restrict on reputation. We'll talk about reputation in a moment when we get to your profile. Um, typically, no restrictions is fine here. But if you have issues with people with low reputations, you can restrict this. I have not found any issues there, but I also play typically with my own group of players that I like. We have about almost 100 people so far that we play together. And so we kind of eliminate this problem by doing that. Speaking of group restrictions, if you are a member of a group, you can put that here. My friends, everyone's a member of. This particular account, How to Be GA, has one friend, which is me. And so if I click on my friends, my other account is the only one that can see this. You can also restrict to language. This mostly affects the chat. Uh, but so the game itself will play in whatever language it's been translated to. And you can play with people across the world just fine. But if you really want to only be able to have people that you can actually talk to, you can choose the language that you want to restrict to. Um, again, it's you probably don't need to restrict this, uh, but if that's what you want, you can do that too. You click OK, and then we can see access restricted to beginners and how to be GA's friends, and that's it. So even if I am his friend, if I'm not a beginner in this game, I still won't be able to join this unless I'm invited. And this is the next thing I'll teach here is when you want to play with specific people, you can say, I want to invite someone. So I want to invite my friend here. Um, and when you invite the friend, you will see that they will be grayed out here. Now, it is possible that you invite somebody and they never join. So how do you uninvite? Well, this link right here, even though this whole section is grayed out, this link is still active and you can expel the player by clicking here. If I join this game from my other account, then this game will have two players in it. But notice we have five players here. I'm going to play a bad game, um, so says this recommendation here, and play a two-player game with myself. Now, if I switch over to my other account, I see how to BGA has invited me to a game. This is what you would actually see if somebody invites you to a game. And I can say, yes, I want to accept this. It's going to tell me, hey, this is a real game. You have to play it. If you're going to accept it, play it. Sure. Yes. Would love to do that. So now what has happened is everyone in the game has signed up. So we have everyone here. There's two seats. There's two players. Both players have agreed to play the game. And now we see a new option here, which is go to game. Going back to the How to BGA account, I see that this is also updated and we can go to two players. Also, I really don't recommend playing with two players. We also see this little bubble up here saying, hey, you have a turn that you can take. Great. So if I click go to game here or click this bubble because it, this is the one, it'll take me to the same place. But let's go to game. Now I can play. So if you are playing a game and you want to get out of that game, you want to go to the next uh, game in your list, there is this little arrow button here. When you click on this button, it'll say, hey, are you sure you want to leave? You have an active turn right, right now. This will take you to your next table. Say, yeah, I want to leave. When you leave this or when you click um, show me all your games, you can see all your games in progress. I have two games in progress. One of the games is my turn. I can tell by because there's a spinning hourglass. Another game is somebody else's turn. This is a game I joined because they had started this game. And this is a premium game. 
Now I can click on either one of these if I want to see what this table looks like. I can come over here and see this table. And you can see here that this is all set up to play. It's my opponent's turn to take. One table is waiting for me, so if I click on that, I'm going to be taken to the table that is waiting for me. And then I can go back to my game list. Now, there's a couple different ways to get to this game list. Um, another way to get to it, no matter where you're at, we'll go to the home page, is if you click on this button here and there's a turn amount there, it's going to take you to your game. But if you just want to go and see all your games that you're playing, you can click on your uh, icon here, that's your icon or your avatar, and you can see all the games in progress, which ones are your turn, and if you want to view all the current tables, you can click here. But let's say you're not comfortable yet, and you don't want to play with somebody else just yet because you just want to try things out on your own. This is where solo games come into play. To check out for solo games, there's two ways to do that. You can put the filters and say solo, or usually this solo filter is right here. So let's pick a game that is not premium, uh, Steamrollers. So I'm going to click on this game. Same screen that comes up. Obviously, we haven't chosen whether or not we're going to play solo or not. So just like starting any game, uh, we're going to say play. And there's a couple differences here when we play something solo. When we create the table, the first thing we want to do is we want to take the number of players and put it to one. However, as soon as I try to do this, I'm going to get an error. Solo mode for games can only be played in training mode. So this is one instance where even if you wanted to, you couldn't play normal mode. You must play training mode. That means that all solo games are essentially unranked and untracked as far as stats are concerned. It's still the full game and everything that you would want out of the solo game. You're just not getting credit for the stats of that because it's a solo game. And that's what the admins have decided. So I'm setting this to one training mode. I have two options. I can choose the difficulty and I can choose who I'm going to go against in this. We'll just keep these normal. I don't need to worry about restricting the table access. There's only one player and that's me. So I can open the table to other players. Wait, why would? Hmm. So this button does not change if you are a solo player or not. It's the most confusing thing with starting a solo game. Yes, you do need to open table to other players, but you are the only player and the only seat, so nobody else can join. You also need to say, okay, everybody's seated and ready to go, so I need to hit start game. Excellent. And now that everyone's there, now I need to actually go to the game so I can play. Finally, let's talk about our profile and stats. So. This upper right corner, this shows you your avatar. This is randomly assigned to you when you first create your account. Uh, it gives you your karma score. This will go, it starts at 75. It goes up for each completed game you successfully complete without dropping or missing turns. And it'll go down if you drop or miss turns. This here is what people can look at to say, hey, does this person play on time? Do they play their whole games? Do they not drop in the middle? And it's a very important score. Um, most people, after they've played their you know handful of games, will have this score at 100, and it'll just stay at 100. If you click on the score, you can click on the score for anybody. Um, you can see what type of rep uh, recent penalties they got, what kind. So this is if I exited a game completely, or this is if I ran out of time taking a turn. So you'll see these different penalties in here. Um, you have your general about information, which you can update here if you want to. We just talked about your reputation. Recent activity, um, I recently became friends with myself. Uh, games I've played. In this particular case, I haven't played any, but I do have a, a badge here. There's a lot of achievements and badges you can get by just logging in. Um, I have one friend, I'm not part of any group. And this is the experience, is the different games you've played. It shows you the number of games you've played and your victories. Like I said, this here shows zero games, even though I started it and exited it, it was a training game, so no game was logged here. And this account has not completed any games. Now, if I go to my main account, we can see there's a lot more here for your games. So I've played Railroad Inc. a lot of times. I love this game. 91 games, 34 victories, 141% win rate. Um, the way the stats are calculated is it is based on the number of players, and if 
you're playing a 12-person game of Railroad Inc. and you beat the 11 other people, those are all considered wins, 11 different wins. But I only get a victory if I'm the first person in that um 12 person game so that's kind of the separation there the reason this has to happen is just because of math when you're dealing with multiplayer games that are ranked by score um you're going to have different win rates and there's no other fair way to do this otherwise your win rate would be you know five or ten percent on on average or something like that so that's why your win rates can be a little weird but if you want to get more information in there you can click on my statistics and you can see your ranks as it goes through my rank here is uh, 328, which is the highest rank I have in any game. I've also played it more than any other game. Um, it shows you like a graph of, you know, how that rank is climbed and how, you know, when I started playing back in February, you get a ton of different stats. This is going to be different per each game. Um, I can also take a look at different games I've played. Chris Steele's game history. And I can take a look at different games I've played inside of this. So I can say, okay, in the most recent game I played, this is who I played. This is where I ranked and scored inside of it. And this is my adjustment for my ranking. I can see increases and decreases to it. And you can go back and you can see essentially every game you've played in normal mode. This is why I recommend you play in normal mode because this allows you to have a ton of stat tracking and really just you know a bunch of stuff that you can dig into. And if you're into data, then you can find out all that stuff. Back to our how to BGA account, not as much information over here. Last thing I want to do is cover ELO um, because you'll see it a lot. If you're playing in ranked games, your ELO is going to go up. And one of the things you want to do is you want to have an ELO of 100 on games that you want to play for tournaments or play in arena. That's really the minimum is you just need a 100. Your ELO can never go below 100. In order to cover ELO, what I want to do is actually look at the help at the very bottom of any page. You scroll down. What is Board Game Arena? Who are we? FAQ and contact us. Um, we're going to look at the FAQ here. How is my ELO rank computed? So as we click on this, you can see players is is based on a formula. They give you, basically tell you how the formula works um, for a two-player game. It gets a little bit more complicated with multiplayer games. You're actually getting, again, if I'm playing 11 other people, it's as if I played 11 games, and then the sum of all of those get added together. You don't really need to worry about how this formula works so much. Just know it's here, and if you win games, your ELL will go up. If you lose games and it's above 100, it'll go down. You will never lose ELO under 100, though. So that's all you got to do. Get to 100, and nothing else matters. Um, I have a 300-plus on Railroad Inc. It doesn't do anything for me besides give me bragging rights. The 100 is what was necessary for me to like play in tournaments and arena mode and things like that. So that's ELO. Also, the FAQ in general, you can get lots and lots of information. I will be doing other videos um, covering how to play, going in depth on arena modes, tournament modes, uh, the communities, all of those types of things. Uh, so check back later and happy gaming.